Chapter 12 Naruto, Emilia, and Rem finally returned to Roswell's territory. The place seemed to be recovering the energy it lost after the villagers were evacuated from their homes, since more than one family already came back once they were sure it was safe. I'm relieved they came back safely. Said Amelia, having a relieved expression seeing the villagers again. Yeah, my clones searched everywhere for any enemies that could endanger them, but found none. The blonde said as he looked at Remington, Hey, Rem, how long does it take to go to the sanctuary? Only half of them are already here, and I didn't sense the other half. Eight hours away from here in a carriage, said Rem. Naruto nodded to her, and he's still pissed with Roswell for letting the witch cult attack his territory, where he knew people lived. He couldn't forgive and didn't want to hear his dumb excuses. He had no excuses to retain from killing that club of fucking psychopaths since he knew that he had the power to. The shinobi hates that fucking clown for leaving the villagers behind. He learned recently that Roswell found Amelia in a frozen forest and promised to her that he would melt the ice that trapped it as long as Amelia was elected as the new king. Well, that is bullshit to Naruto. There was no way that the wizard clown can melt that ice and fulfill the promise he made to Amelia. It took them 10 minutes in the carriage to finally reach Roswell's mansion. Naruto took a good look around the place and was surprised that the mansion remained really clean since they left. Strange, it almost looked like it was frozen in time, the only thing missing was its inhabitants. Ha! Huh. Nothing has changed in. Naruto commented. It seems like it, Beatrice-sama should be inside the mansion. Rem said with a strange look on her face as she looked at the mansion. Something bothered her about this. When Amelia jumped off the carriage, she walked towards Naruto. Is it just me or someone got here before us? She asked, he was inclined to agree with her, something was definitely wrong, mansions didn't clean themselves. Naruto and Rem unsheathed their weapons preparing to attack the intruder inside. Amelia had her magic ready and waited for Naruto's signal before going in. Then, she watched her knight unlock the door with a key, open it slowly, and peeking inside. The blonde went inside first, he stayed on guard as he scanned the place for an intruder. He didn't find negative emotions from an intruder. This cannot be. He looked at Rem who spoke and had a shocked expression on her face. Her body was shaking for some reason. The noise of steps caught his attention as he turned to the stairs and found a figure, but it didn't seem like an intruder. The figure was female. She has long blonde hair and green eyes. She wore a maid uniform like Rem and Ram. Naruto looked at Rem who seemed to be shocked, he began to lower his kunai and approached her. Frederica? Is that you? Rem asked, shocked to see her since she quit her job and left the mansion. She hasn't seen her for several months. Hello, Rem and Amelia-sama. Frederica spoke with a warm smile as she bowed to the three, she figured that the blonde was a guest in the mansion since the girls seemed to be at ease in his presence. I believe you must be a new guest. I'm Frederica Bauman. Yeah, I'm Naruto Uzumaki. He replied, noticing her teeth were sharp fangs when she smiled. Naruto Kuen, this is Frederica Bauman. She was a maid alongside us for a long time. Rem introduced. I see. Ram told me there were three maids in the mansion before. So, I take it that was you then. Naruto said. Yes, that was me. Frederica said with a nod, noticing Rem smiling at Naruto. This was her first time looking at her smile so fondly, Rem didn't do that in the past. Rem, has something changed since the last time we saw each other? You seem much happier. The blue-haired Oni turned to Frederica with a warm smile on her face. Naruto Kuen helped me realize a lot of things that had to do with my past. He's been much help lately, he also saved my life. He's Amelia Sama's knight. She said with closed eyes as she placed her hands on the heart. Thank you for saving Rem's life, Naruto Sama. I didn't know that you're Amelia's knight. Frederica said as she bowed to Rem's savior and Amelia's knight. She then looked at Naruto when he made a hand gesture, waving at her to stop. P please, call me Naruto. I would rather have my name without the Sama. Naruto said with a smile. Frederica accepted his request as she bowed to him again. Very well, Naruto. I shall call you by your name. She said. Frederica, why are you here? Amelia asked the important question. I came back to visit you until I discovered the events that lead to you going to the city. The blonde maid was talking about the lack of people in the mansion since she noticed the villagers coming back. Beatrice explained everything to me, I'm glad you're all safe. Were you planning to leave when we, came back? Amelia asked. 
Yes, I will stay here and help you three. She said as she looked at all three and realized why are they here. I take it that you three are planning to go to the sanctuary. Yeah, but actually, I will go visit sanctuary today on my own. Amelia and Rem can stay dash. Naruto, please don't say that. You know I don't like it when you do. Amelia interrupted him by grabbing his hand making blonde look at her. We just got here after battling the Hakugiai. You need to wait here until you're well rested. You can't go on your own, not in the state you're in right now. She gripped his hand to keep him by her side. Amelia, I'm okay. Really? I can dash. Amelia Salma is right. You need to stay and rest until tomorrow. Rem added joining with Amelia, showing Naruto a begging expression on her face. She went in front of him to stop him from going out. You saved everyone from their deaths and you defeated the Hakugiai. Stay here and rest, that's the least you deserve. Please Naruto. You're my knight. As your candidate, I order you to stay here and rest first. The half-elf said. Do it for me. Frederica covered her mouth in shock at the two girls, their attitude was very different from what she remembered, in the past Rem wouldn't care and Amelia would be too shy to say anything, but here they were practically ordering him to rest. This blonde human was quite a stubborn man. Amelia had a strong bond with her knight, Frederica could tell by looking at her worried expression. Frederica let a small giggle and decided to join up with two. She didn't know what he was capable of but he could use a little rest since the ride here alone could tire a normal person. Since he was apparently such a nice person she was going to help him. They're right, Naruto. You three just came here and didn't have a chance to rest. And, you can't deny Amelia because you're her knight. She said with a warm smile. Naruto couldn't help but blush looking at Amelia's face. Damn, her face is angelic again and his heart skipped a beat. That was the second time Amelia showed her angel face. He sighed with a defeated sigh, changing his expression into a smile for Amelia and Remington, all right, I'll stay and rest here. He said, earning two smiles from the half-elf and blue oni. Hey, Beatrice. Naruto said as he entered the library and found Beatrice. He sighed with relief to see her safe. The mansion's gotten noisy since you came back Kashira. She said, reading her book as she gazed at the blonde. However, you came back as you promised. Told you I'd come back for you. He said as he sat on the floor and looked at Beatrice. She's still the same person he remembered. Is everything alright? I heard you met Frederica. Yes, she's a demi-human but at least she isn't so noisy. A demi-human? I should have guessed. Naruto remembered Frederica's fangs when she smiled. I noticed she has fangs. What is she? She can transform into a large leopard beast. She replied. Naruto didn't know Frederica could turn into a leopard, but he had seen some people transform in his world, like turning into a demon or turning into an animal. So, it wasn't his first time to see it. So, why are you here for? Want me to kick you? Beatrice asked with a harsh tone. So mean of you. I'm hurt. Amelia, Rem, and I are going to Sanctuary to meet the other villagers. He said with a sad look. Beatrice gave him a humph when she closed the book before she stood up. She returned the book to the bookshelf and reached to grab another beside it, having some problems due to her height. Then, she saw Naruto who walked beside her and reached for the book was looking for. At his action, something came in her mind. Her eyes widened slightly, and she stared at Naruto's straight posture while reaching for the book. His body changed into black color, and he wore a yellow light coat made out of pure light. Beatrice saw an ancient black circle on his sleeves and nine comas on his back. For the first time since they met each other, she saw the true depths of his power, and she felt that she was in the presence of a divine being. This one, right? Beatrice? Naruto called uncertainly, noticing her staring at him. His voice snapped her from her dazed state as she blinked in confusion at him. You're alright? What? Her cheeks flushed slightly and she coughed into her fist, forgetting everything she saw. I'm fine. The one next to it Kashira. Naruto grabbed the book from the bookshelf and handed it over to Beatrice who accepted by hugging it to her chest. The blonde sat down next to her, watching her read the book she had now. I won't thank you Kashira. Beatrice said. You're welcome. He grinned as he put his hands back of the head to relax. Amelia and Rem were worried about you. You should go out and say hi to them. They're worrying about nothing I. 
Enough saying, nothing, of this, Beatrice. We all care about you and will never leave your side. Don't forget that. We came back for you because we care about you and you are our friend. The reason why I came to visit you was because. Beatrice looked at him carefully, waiting for his words. Because? She asked curiously. I'm here to set you free, Beatrice. I'm going to get you out of here, so you can have your freedom. Naruto answered with serious eyes. The book dropped from her hands as she looked at Naruto with a shocked expression on her face. This human. He didn't seem to lie to her. So, he came back for her because he wanted her to be free and join him outside. She was, surprised. You came back to take me out of here. Are you serious? She asked. Of course I'm serious. If there's a way, then I'll never give up until I find it to set you free. There are lots of things you don't know about me. The blonde shinobi said, giving her his best reassuring smile, believe me or not, but I helped the bijus to give them freedom in my world, so you could say I'm familiar with unbreakable curses. Beatrice didn't answer him but kept looking at him with a hopeful expression. She knew he wasn't lying about helping the bijus, they had that conversation a while ago. Could he be, that person, who could set her free from this place? Anyway, Beatrice, there's something I wanted to show you. Naruto said, taking out the gospel that belonged to Petalgeus. He didn't know what language it was written in, that's why he brought it to Beatrice. This book is written in a strange language. I thought you'd know about Dash, he paused when he saw Beatrice's eyes widen. A gospel? Why, how do you? I took it from a corpse named Petalgeus, he was in charge of the witch cult that attacked the village. I killed him to stop his horrible acts. I took his book because I thought it had information about the Witch of Envy and her connection with the Sin Archbishops. Naruto said as he handed the gospel over to her and she took it from him. He watched Beatrice, tracing her fingers over the cover with more emotions on her face that he remembered seeing. The expression she had when she looked at the gospel was one of longing, she seemed to remember something long since buried in her memory. You left me behind to Kashira, Juice. She mumbled quietly. Who? Naruto was sure he heard her mumbling a name. I. I'll tell you a bit. More importantly, if you're the one who killed Sloth, what happened to the witch factor, Kashira? Witch factor? I don't know what you're talking about, all I know about Sin Archbishops is that they represent a sin. I see. Naruto, if I'm correct, did you fight the Hakugiai? Beatrice looked at him with a serious expression on her face. She smelled the Hakugiai scent on him, since he was powerful he no doubts injured or even killed the beast. Yeah, I killed the whale, but I wasn't alone. I see. Then, for what on purpose did you kill Sloth Kashira? I don't understand. Beatrice was surprised he killed the Hakugiai, one of the three great demon beasts. She had to be real, Beatrice knew that the blonde human killed the Hakugiai by himself with a powerful technique. He could take down all the three great demon beasts by himself if it came down to it. Naruto blinked his eyes in confusion at the expression on her face. He had no idea why she's asking this. Well, he tried to kill the villagers then he tried to kidnap Amelia because she was a possible vessel for Satella. I had to end his life before he did any of that. He answered carefully, looking carefully at her expression. Beatrice changed her expression into her normal one with a sigh. I I see. I understand why you killed Sloth. She said as she looked at the gospel. Petalgeus died. She couldn't believe it. She didn't know the person in charge of the witch cult would be him. Beatrice, asked Naruto, seeing Beatrice hug the gospel with a sad expression on her face. It was rare to see her show so many emotions, especially since she found out Petalgeus' death, who he saw as nothing but a madman. Perhaps they knew one another from before he became whatever he was before his death, it had to be buried in Beatrice's mind for her to show so many emotions. Maybe, she didn't know that Petalgeus was a bad person since she met him as a good one. Naruto walked towards her and kneeled at her level to see her face. Beatrice, if you don't want to talk about him it's okay, I won't force you. I'm here to know about the sanctuary, so I thought you'd know Dash, he was shocked as she flung herself into his chest and dropped him on the ground with her. Beatrice? He looked down at Beatrice, she's holding his sweater tight with her small hands, she never looked at him. She didn't want him to see her emotions as she buried her head into his chest. The blonde man had no choice but to hug her back as he wrapped his arms around her small body. Why? Why am I? Beatrice thought, she didn't know why she hugged him and cried. She felt pain in her heart. 
Ever since she got back to the mansion with Amelia-sama and Naruto-kun, things weren't looking good for Naruto. She didn't know what happened between him and Roswell, or why he got angry at him. Naruto told her, Amelia, and Frederica the truth about Roswell's actions. He had already told Beatrice about him and Puck listened to him from Amelia's crystal necklace. They listened to Naruto and he told them that Roswell couldn't be trusted. He had no proof other than the contradicting actions Roswell had done in the past and recently, by his eyes showed that he knew that to be the truth. Rem was aware that Naruto could detect people's negative emotions, he found such emotions from Roswell since the very beginning. Is he telling us the truth? Rem thought with a worried expression. She is loyal to Roswell because he saved her and her sister from a terrible fate in the hands of the witch cultists. However, he wasn't the one who guided her to be the person she was right now. The one who opened her eyes was Naruto Uzumaki. Even worse Roswell seemed to be willing to doom Erlum village to a destiny similar to her own, while Naruto did everything in his power to stop them. She confessed her love feelings to him, but she knew that his heart belonged to Amelia. Rem chose to tell him because she wanted to get it out of her chest. Amelia should be happy for having Naruto as her knight. If he stays longer with her, maybe his life would change just as much as he had changed their lives. Rem opened the main doors which lead her outside the mansion, taking a breath, and feeling the breeze and the sun she relaxed for a second. Welcome back, Naruto-kun. How are things going? She asked with a smile. Things are fine. I set up traps in the forest, so nothing will sneak in to attack the villagers. Naruto said, the fact that he explored the surroundings of the village once didn't mean that something wouldn't appear while he wasn't in the mansion, walking past her he stopped and turned to see her. Oh, Rem. Petra wants to take a job as a maid here. Do you think she can work here? The blue maid blinked her eyes in shock at his words, but she nodded anyway. Yes, Petra can take a job here. And Naruto, I actually want to talk with you. Can we walk while we talk? She asked. Yeah, sure, said Naruto, walking with Rem in the garden, he was curious as to what Rem wanted. What's up? Are you? Rem swallowed as she grasped her hands tight and looked at him. Are you still angry at Roswell-sama? Naruto fell silent. His smile vanished as he stared at Rem, his fist clenched in anger, not showing her his angry expression. He really hated Roswell right now. Yes, I'm still angry at him for leaving the villagers behind. But, I might have an idea of something he did. He said as he turned to Remington, promise me you won't tell anyone. Elsa was hired by Roswell to steal Amelia's insignia, he tried to assassinate her. WH what? That's impossible. H how? Me and the other Bijus talked about Roswell. We finally found something out, Elsa was hired by Roswell. Naruto-kun, how can you be sure that Elsa was hired by Roswell-sama? Rem asked. I'm definitely positive, Rem, and trust me. I've been dealing with people like him in my world. Naruto said. I don't know why Roswell hired Elsa to kill Amelia, but I'm going to find out the truth. Rem felt uncomfortable about his assumptions. Naruto-kun. Her voice turned soft as she approached him and grabbed his hand to make him look at her. Rem, is something wrong? He asked. Rem shook her head and her body trembled. Hey, what's wrong? I don't want you to kill Roswell-sama. I know the truth about him, but he saved my sister and me from the witch cult. Hey, relax. I'm not going to kill him. I just want to know his reasons. That's all, Remington. He said as he put his hand on Rem's head and stroked gently. He heard her giggling and saw her smiling, so he smiled at her. Naruto wasn't going to kill Roswell unless the clown guy attacked him first. He needs to know why he hired Elsa to steal Amelia's insignia and kill her. However, Roswell saved Rem and Ram from being attacked by the witch cult. He seemed to know when the witch cult would attack their village. Was he the one behind Rem and Ram's village massacre? Naruto-kun. The blue oni said worried, looking at him spaced out for a minute. Her voice reached him as he tilted to her. I'm fine, Remington. I was thinking about going to the sanctuary tomorrow. Yes, you're right. Frederica finished preparing the bedrooms for the three, including her, and walked in the hallways. Everyone was eating dinner already since they have already bathed after battling with the Hakugiai. She was surprised the Hakugiai was dead and the one that killed it was Naruto. As if her thoughts summoned him she saw Naruto looking at the sky through the window. She approached him and stood next to him, causing him to look at her. Hey, Frederica. What are you doing here? Naruto asked. 
I finished preparing the bedrooms for you three to sleep. You should go rest for tomorrow. The road to the sanctuary is a long ride, she said. Yeah, I know that, but I want to stay here for a little longer. He continued to look at the sky and stars. So, tell me about yourself, Frederica. I heard from Beatrice that you're a demi-human who can turn into a leopard. Yes, indeed I am. Frederica said with a smile. How was talking with her? She's still the same I remembered her to be when I first met her, but we're all cool. He chuckled lightly. Frederica was surprised that Beatrice let the boy in her room and he talked with her without her kicking him out. I see. By the way, I noticed you and Amelia have a strong relationship since I first saw you. You're human, but you're not afraid of her appearance. Why is that? She said. Why would I be afraid of her? She was sweet, kind, and warm. She didn't have much experience with people, so I became her first friend. Naruto said a light-hearted smile. Now, Frederica understood why Amelia chose him to become a knight, his kindness naturally attracted her toward him. He wasn't like the other humans who disliked her for being a half-elf. I'm happy she chose you as the knight, Naruto. She seems to be very happy. She smiled. I tried my best to make her happy. The people of Erlem village finally accepted her as a normal person. They were happy with her because she helped them when they needed it the most. Naruto said. How long have you worked here? I became a new servant when I was 12 years old. It has already been over 10 years since then. Wow, she's a little older than him. Naruto would guess that she's 22 years old. She certainly had worked here for a long time. So, Rem and Ram came after her, working to be new maids after Roswell rescued them. Oh, you're mistaken, Naruto. Rem and Ram are my seniors. Frederica said quickly, informing him before Naruto thinks she was here first. Really? Oh wow. I guess you three were close. I doted on Rem, wanting her to call me Nesama. But around the time we worked together, Rem would only look at Ram. The blonde maid said, thinking about Rem's new personality when she met her today. She has changed so much because of this blonde human. Come to think of it, I'm surprised you talked with Rem and she smiled at you, she didn't usually talk with guests in the past. Yeah, I know that, but you should have come back sooner. I'm sure Rem would have loved to see you again. Naruto said. You saved her life and changed her for the better. I'm really happy that you did it for her. She said. That's what friend do to Bayo. He smiled, putting his arms behind his head and looking at her. Say, can you tell me about the sanctuary? You seem to know that place. Of course, the sanctuary is a village located within Roswell's territory, but it's poor. A group of demi-humans live there, and I'm sure the villagers of Erlem village are there right now. Don't worry about them, I'm sure they won't do anything bad to them. Then, why don't the villagers just leave the sanctuary? It is because the sanctuary has a barrier that prevents demi-humans from going through it. For example, since they entered the sanctuary, some of them aren't allowed to leave, and I suppose the others stayed to keep them company. Wait a minute. What? What do you mean they're not allowed to leave? He asked with a shocked expression, learning about the sanctuary stunned him. The barrier was created by Echidna, the Witch of Greed who was killed by the Witch of Envy. Frederica said. Holy shit. No one told Naruto about the sanctuary being created by the Witch of Greed, who creates a barrier that can't allow the villagers to leave. Well, that was stupid. So, demi-humans aren't allowed to leave the place, and he made half of the people of Erlem move there. He closed his eyes for a bit and took a breath slowly, figuring out what to do next. In that case, I guess I have to find a way to set demi-humans and the villagers of Erlem village free from that barrier. He said. You want to free the demi-humans, too? Frederica said stunned. I guess I have a choice, but leaving the demi-humans behind to their luck isn't my thing. So, I'm willing to help them leave the sanctuary. Frederica widened her eyes with shock at Naruto's willingness to help demi-humans. Not a single human ever attempted that because the sanctuary was created by Echidna, the Witch of Greed herself. However, this human right here isn't afraid of anything. It was official, she was glad he was Amelia's knight. You are quite an interesting human, Naruto. The blonde maid said with a light smile. You know Frederica, even though you're a beast human you sure are beautiful. Naruto said with a light-hearted smile, causing the blonde maid to blush. I I am? She asked, playing with her blonde hair with both her hands. It was her first time hearing such kind words from this human. 
Thank you for being so kind to me, Naruto. You should stay here and be a maid again. There's no reason for you to quit the job again. Rem has changed, and I'm sure that you two will work it out someday. Thank you for being so kind again. Frederica said, smiling back to him. Well, I'll leave the sanctuary to you, Amelia, and Remington. One more thing, beware of a guy named Garfield. Garfield? Is he your ex or something? No. He's my brother, and oh never mind. When you enter the sanctuary, you need to be careful of him. Is everything ready, Rem? Naruto asked, looking at the blue-haired maid who just came out from the carriage after packing some things for their journey. Yes, Naruto-kun, everything is ready. Rem nodded as she looked at Frederica. Frederica, you can come with us. I'm sure your brother wants to see you. I'd love to go with you, but I want to stay here and guard this place. She said as she turned to Naruto and walked toward him. Naruto, listen very carefully. It has been a long time since I left my home there, but when you enter the barrier, Garfield will be there in no time and will think of you as an intruder. Got it, Frederica. After you pass the barrier, you will have to fight Garfield or tell him that you're with me. One more thing, if you pass the barrier, you three won't able to leave the sanctuary. After hearing her warnings Naruto nodded to her as he turned around and headed toward the carriage. They were waiting for Amelia who was changing her clothes. He breathed slowly, preparing himself to travel to the sanctuary and finding a way to break down the barrier. Frederica's information was certainly helpful but it didn't bring him any closer to figuring out how to break the barrier. The barrier was created by Echidna, so Naruto had to be careful of any surprise she most likely left behind. Sorry. Did I make you wait? Oh no, we just finished Pack Dash, his voice was caught in his throat when he saw Amelia in her new clothes. The half-elf wore a white dress with a short skirt and pink choker tied around her neck. Her arms were covered with white sleeves, and she wore white boots. She had a pink short cloth tied around her waist. Seeing her like this, Naruto was surprised at her new dress and instantly lost his words. He couldn't help but blush at her dress and how pretty she was in it, very pretty. I, I decided try something new since I saw your new clothes. Amelia asked with a blush, rubbing her sleeve as she shyly looked at Naruto. Naruto, how do I look? Why you look great. He said. Ehem. We should get inside the carriage. Why you're right. Please, wait. Naruto-sama. A familiar voice caused the blonde shinobi to turn around and see a cute girl in a maid outfit with reddish-brown hair. Petra took a maid's job today and it was her first day, luckily they had the old maid dresses the younger maids used. Please take this with you. Petra said, giving him a white handkerchief. She sewed the embroidery herself wanting to give it to her savior. Naruto smiled at her as he grabbed the handkerchief. Thank you, Petra. I will keep it safe. He said as he stroked the girl's head gently before he got in the carriage. You two take care of the mansion. Amelia said waving at them. So Puck really hasn't shown up in a while, huh? Naruto said, looking at Amelia who looked at her necklace in worry. No, he hasn't. I've called him so many times, and I can still sense his presence, but, this is the first time he's gone that long without coming out. I'm a little worried. Amelia said as she held her necklace and wondered why Puck hadn't shown up yet. They sat next to each other and talked in the carriage. It was strange that Puck hasn't shown up since they left the mansion. Puck has been missing more since Naruto killed Petalgeus and the Hakugiai. Naruto looked at Amelia, he was worried about Puck too. He reached for her hand and held it with his own as the half-elf turned to look at him. There's no need to worry, even without Puck, I'm here for you. I'm your knight and your friend. I will protect you no matter what happens, I swear. He said. Naruto. She said softly as she accepted his hand and rested her head on his shoulder. A warm smile crossed her face, caused by his words. He's right. She shouldn't be troubled about Puck's absence because her knight is here with her. His actions. His words. They're the ones that always kept her calm, made her smile, and comforted her. Naruto is a good friend with a good soul, and he always stayed right beside her. No matter what happens, he will always protect her. Amelia noticed her hand still holding his own, but she didn't want to let go of it. She wouldn't mind if his hand is holding hers, she liked it. Thank you for everything, Naruto. She said gently. The blonde shinobi nodded with a smile on his face. You're welcome, Amelia. He said. 
The shinobi felt a sudden spike of natural energy and he reacted by looking at the forest outside. They arrived far sooner than he thought possible for the carriage. We're here, aren't we? Amelia said sleepily, she didn't even look outside the window to confirm it. Eh? How did you know? He asked. I have elf blood. Elves have an unbreakable connection to the forest, to the point where we're called the race of the four dash. Naruto looked at Amelia who was about to collapse, before he swooped in and caught her. She looked to be in anguish, her breathing shallow. Amelia? What happened, Amelia? He asked. The half-elf couldn't reply. Her breaths were shallow and erratic but she had no fever and wasn't sweating. He immediately ran to the front of the carriage and jammed his head through the window connecting to the driver, perhaps Rem could help her. However, the blue oni pulled the leash of the earth dragon making the carriage stop suddenly, almost making Naruto fly without his cloak. I'm sorry, Naruto-kun. There's a person who's blocking our way. She said with a light glare. Come in, so boldy face to face, pretty brave F ya, outsider. A young man spoke to them with a strong tone. After hearing that, Naruto got out of the carriage and saw a person's figure standing in front of them blocking their way. The person was slightly taller than Ram. He had short, spiky blonde hair, with a conspicuous white scar on his forehead. He wore a short black red striped open vest, and he had black pants. Ain't like I care where you're from, but you there with blonde spiky hair. The blonde guy pointed his finger at Naruto who just had a clueless expression. Ya yeah, are one interesting person you seem strong. Naruto was going to say something to him, but he had to block an attack when the guy charged him, blocking his leg from kicking his head. Instead of asking the man why he did it, Naruto's eyes narrowed slightly, he grabbed the man's leg and threw him away from the carriage before he could hurt an unconscious Amelia. He watched him crash into a bunch of trees, but he just got up as fast. Then, the blonde boy did it again as he ran toward him and raised his fist to punch him in his face. The shinobi blocked his attack by grabbing his fist with his hand and twisting it in a submission move as he pinned him down on the ground. This boy seemed very aggressive and had a wild look on his face. Don't fight him. He's Garfield. Frederica's brother. Rem said. What? Really? Naruto looked at the blonde boy on the ground, Garfield if Rem was correct. He quickly offered him a hand, but he rejected his help. Garfield looked at the familiar blue-haired girl who sat on the carriage. You know my name? Ah, you must be Ram's sister. He said. Indeed, I am Ram's sister. We're here for the villagers. Rem said. Since you two are here, that bastard Roswell told me there was a chick named Amelia, the half-devil, correct? She's a half-elf. Please refrain from calling her a demon. Naruto said calmly, holding his anger. Luckily, he managed to calm himself down. Garfield walked toward Naruto and Rem to see them, but he only looked at Naruto. You threw me after you block my kick. You're very strong, but let's get inside first. He grinned. The two blondes went inside the carriage before Rem continued to ride the earth dragon. They're on their way to the sanctuary, Garfield giving them directions. However, Amelia was still asleep or unconscious after passing through the barrier. Meeting Garfield wasn't totally unexpected since Frederica warned them of his more than likely arrival, what was a surprise was the fact that Frederica was the sister of this wild man, their personalities clashed with each other. I'm guessing you know my name, but I didn't catch yours. Garfield looked at Naruto who sat next to Amelia and she slept on his lap. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Your sister told us about you before meeting you. He replied, narrowing his eyes at the wild guy. He sensed his mana, and it seemed his race had wild mana by nature. He noticed Garfield's fangs very similar to Frederica's, but there was something different about him. Rage. Bloodlust. It seemed that unlike Frederica this man embraced the wild nature of his race, explaining why he attacked first and asked a second. Naruto was interested in how their feelings affected their transformation, if it did. So, can you explain why Amelia fell asleep? Naruto asked. She fell asleep because she got close to the barrier. It's true that she is an elf, but she's a mixed blood. Garfield said. This sanctuary is where people with mixed blood live because they can go nowhere else, not for a lack of trying. I see, that makes sense. So, I heard Roswell came to the sanctuary. You know him, right? You've at least heard my name before, yeah? Kinda I guess, but s probably cause of all the people related to Roswell, my amazing self's blatantly the strongest. Right, but that wasn't really the point. 
I didn't ask you that. Anyways, this just gives me a lot to ask Roswell regarding the sanctuary, but I heard that we can't leave the barrier. That's right. You three can't leave this place unless you do a trial. A trial? What is dash, Naruto noticed Amelia stirring on his lap. Her eyes fluttered open and she looked around the carriage slowly, still not fully awake, she saw him and gave him a dumb smile. Morning, Naruto. The half-elf said with a slur, wiping a bit of drool absent-mindedly. Are you okay? Does your head hurt or anything? He asked. Uh, no. I don't feel anything strange, but... One could almost see her memories returning to her, she suddenly got up with plenty of energy. Naruto. I collapsed when I tried to say something. Are you okay? Hey, calm down. We have a new guest, he's Garfield, Frederica's brother. The half-elf looked at the blonde guy who chuckled at her. This is... Garfield? She asked with narrowed eyes, it seemed she was still half awake. I'm interested in what she said, about me, but I'll put that off for later. We're gonna be reaching, the village soon. Several minutes later, Naruto and the group finally arrived at the sanctuary, but Frederica seemed spot on with her description of the place, sadly. The wooden houses were all around in the distance, the place was nothing but a poor village. The group got out of the carriage, exploring with their eyes to see if the villagers were anywhere in sight. This place has a strange air to it. Naruto commented, feeling something wrong in the natural energy. He looked at Rem to see if she knows something about the place. Rem, have you been here before? No, Naruto-kun. This is my first time here. Before you came in the mansion, Frederica warned me not to go to the sanctuary. The blue oni replied honestly. I never thought this place would be this poor. Sure is. S.A. Depressant Place. Jussian, the people inside re even more depressing. Fuckin' everyone got this gloomy look, like they're livin', but they're dead. Garfield said. That doesn't sound like a sanctuary. So, this is the village created by Echidna, the Witch of Greed, and she created the barrier too. Amelia? Naruto wondered, looking at the half-elf who looked around and seemed unable to calm down. Her fingers caught on the hem of Naruto's jacket. This was his first time seeing her face so worried since she entered the sanctuary. The half-elf clearly didn't feel comfortable in this place, more than likely because this place had a connection to the witches. He couldn't blame her for showing such a reaction. Standing in a place where a witch once stood was bad, worse for Amelia since she was compared to them constantly. Naruto could relate since he lived in a place where he was compared to Kurama, the one who destroyed his home. Death. Loss. Hate. All those things were dropped on him too, he was supposed to shoulder them, but Amelia didn't have to. Are you alright? He asked. It's just kind of like, I can't calm down. What calls me, like I have a weird feeling, or... I don't really know how to describe it. Amelia said as she touched her necklace, seriously uneasy about Puck's absence. She seemed seconds away from having a panic attack until her hand was grabbed by Naruto's. He seemed so calm in the sanctuary, it brought her out of her thoughts. No matter what happens, just leave it to your knight. He's here for you. Naruto said with a light-hearted smile, trying to help Amelia. It worked as Amelia's hand squeezed his own and she gave him one of her angelic smiles. The half-elf smiled at her knight, feeling relieved. His presence seemed to have that effect on her, thank you, my knight. She said as she and Naruto walked together not feeling like letting go of each other. It didn't take them long to find Roswell and Ram in a shack, it seemed like Ram was acting like a guard since she just stood outside it. Rem was relieved to see her sister was safe. Both of them hugged each other, not used to being apart so long. Ram welcomed Amelia and Naruto, and informed them that Roswell was waiting for them, so they followed her to the back of the building. While walking they were informing her of their adventures since she was in here. Ram was surprised at Naruto for killing the leader of the witch cult and the Hakugiai. It was hard to believe him, but Amelia and Rem told her it was true. What they didn't discuss was their new distrust for Roswell, they thought Rem wouldn't take kindly to that, no matter how nice she was. Hello Amelia-sama, Naruto-kun, and Rin. It feels as though it's been quite some time since we've last seen each other, hmm? Roswell greeted in a polite manner. Naruto clenched his fist in anger when he sees him, but managed to cool down his anger. It seemed like he couldn't have a serious talk with him yet because he was lying on a bed covered in blood-stained bandages that wrapped around him. It's been a while, but what happened to you? Who did this to you? He asked. Oh my, don't worry about my injuries. 
I call them wounds of Hanur, although such a name would have a strong implication of being unavoidable by my dignity, or that's how I would like to answer. Roswell said. You don't seem to blame someone. Naruto said, getting a more serious look at his injuries. Those injuries didn't seem like someone inflicted them. Frederica told me about this place. We can't leave the place because of the barrier. Frederica is here, too. Ram was shocked. Where is she? She stayed behind in the mansion to watch over it and keep Beatrice company. She told me that the sanctuary was created by the Witch of Greed, and that she also put up the barrier. The blonde shinobi said. He noticed his hand was squeezed by Amelia's when he said the word, Witch. I thought you knew how to break the barrier, but something tells me you got those injuries because you don't. Roswell looked at his serious azure eyes. It was surprising Frederica trusted Naruto with information about the sanctuary. I can see why Frederica trusted you with these secrets. He said. My wounds are the result of the trial rejecting me. A trial? Amelia asked. Yes. The trial is the last piece of information you will need though. Roswell said with serious eyes, he wasn't singing so the information he was about to reveal was bound to be important. Listen carefully. To free this sanctuary and let everyone go, one has to challenge the trial, and be recognized by it. Then, that's how you got this. Naruto said as the clown nodded to him. If anyone challenges it, their body will be injured. Roswell wasn't kidding about the trial, his injuries revealed so much. He had to respect Roswell's determination, he tried to help the people by completing the trial but got this for failing. That or he himself wanted to go out, but he hoped Roswell had the people in mind when he tried to break the barrier. It had to be very hard for Ram taking care of Roswell's terrible wounds, some of them seemed life-threatening. Now let me get straight T, issue and yeah our demands. Garfield said, pointing his finger at Amelia. Lift the barrier surrounding this sanctuary. To do that, you have to take the trial. Till that's done, no one leaves here. Not like you could just leave yourself in the first place though. Hold on. Why does she have to go? Naruto wondered, sounding protective and a little afraid. You must understand this, Naruto-kun. Roswell said. The only one who will take the trial is going to be Amelia-sama. Not only can you get injured, but there's a chance you will be imprisoned by the witch, forever. Hearing the truth in his word Naruto could only grumble, he didn't like how the trial worked for him. Telling Amelia to take a trial in the tomb because she's a half-elf was a bit ridiculous. He started to get worried until a slender hand grabbed his arm. It's okay, Naruto. I can go and do the trial. I don't want anyone to get hurt or trapped in the tomb forever. She said bravely. I, okay, Amelia. Naruto said, with a defeated sigh. It had been around 15 minutes after they left Roswell's improvised shack. Garfield guided Naruto, Amelia, and Rem to the tomb, the place where Roswell took the trial and faced death to help the villagers, or so they hoped. The tomb was ruined due to time having some shallow cracks along the walls and dense thickets of ivy growing over it. It had to be hundreds of years old. The entrance faced toward the forest, but half of the structure itself was swallowed by the forest so it was hard to gauge how large the tomb really was. Naruto sensed the mana inside the tomb and felt something bad in the air. When he started to absorb the natural energy something unexpected came with it, a voice, dangerous but seductive. Nobody heard the voice but him, and that worried him. This is the Witch of Greed's tomb. Rem said, sensing the mana inside there, it scared her slightly. Her body was shivering until Naruto took her hand in concern. Swallowing, she continued. This tomb is far worse than I thought. I, I never felt so scared of. So only people who are qualified can enter the tomb, and if those qualified people don't pass the trial, they can't leave the sanctuary, right? Naruto asked, looking at Garfield who just nodded with an unsure expression. That's why Amelia has to go in the tomb, because she's a half-elf, correct? That's right. The half-elf Amelia is qualified. Pure-blooded human Naruto ain't. So you're not free to come in and out as you want. It means you can't take the trial without ending like Roswell. He said. I see. The blonde shinobi said, entering the mindscape as he looked at the bijus who agreed with him in what he was about to do. He let go of Rem's hand and patted her head with a smile. The blue oni blinked in seconds at him, but she nodded to him already having a clue as to what he was about to do. There was no way she could stop him, his strength was far superior to her own. She smiled at him, wishing him good luck. Before Naruto could go in, a hand took his and grasped it. 
She saw through his lie at the shack, there was no way someone so determined was going to just accept her going and knowing she could get injured. Amelia heard Roswell's warnings and she didn't want her friend to get trapped there. She refused to see him get trapped there for all eternity. Please stay. She said, keeping a hold of his hand to prevent him from going in. Why you heard what Roswell told us. Don't worry about me. You know I'm someone who never goes back on my word, and I promise you as your friend, and as your knight, that I will come back to you. Hey, hey, did you hear what I just said? It dangerous T, go in without qualifications. Roswell turned out like that since it was night, but that doesn't make it safe just cause it's afternoon. Garfield said, crossing his arms. Amelia gripped Naruto's hand in a vain effort to keep him there. But with ease, he unhooked her hand and leaned in forward to kiss her forehead. You worry too much about me. You know I will come back to you, Amelia. Naruto said with a gentle smile, seeing the half-elf acquire a pink color in her cheeks. Promise? Promise. Then, Naruto and Amelia held each other in an embrace filled with confidence and concern. They smiled at each other before Naruto walked toward the tomb. He glanced back one last time to see Amelia and Rem smiling at him and wishing good luck. When he entered the tomb, the floor beneath him went out of existence, the walls disappeared too. He now stood on an invisible floor, undeterred he started to walk to find what the trial was. Naruto couldn't sense any mana in this place, and it didn't seem like there was something to see or a trial to take anywhere. Suddenly the invisible floor changed to healthy green grass. The whole place he was in changed into some kind of field of green grass, swaying in the wind. Looking up he saw a beautiful blue sky. He found a beautiful girl with long snow white hair and perfect skin. Her eyes were black not unlike her dress. She wore a black butterfly hairpin. Oh. Hello there. She said, looking at Naruto. The blonde shinobi began to walk toward her to meet her. Who are you? My name is Echidna, the Witch of Greed. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.